Hello, everybody. Well, we had an episode of early winter weather yesterday, and we ended up with some snow and ice, and it, it rained. It rained and snowed and iced all in one hour, and, and kept doing this icing and the snowing alternating throughout the day. I don't think that the uh, amount added up too much because uh, our ground still is kind of warm, and it's not going to collect on there as fast, but I mean, there could be a, an inch and a half to two inches out here on the ground. Our grass is a little bit tall right now, so it's hard for me to tell. But we need to get our winter squash picked. And I want to show you our winter squash picking plus the six vegetables that we grew that we would consider survival vegetables for a long, hard winter. So thanks for coming around and joining us. While old guy's up finishing up his morning chores, I'm coming on into greenhouse high tunnel number three. It's, it's not heated, so we can't call it a greenhouse, but we often do. And this is where we grew our winter squash, along with uh, grow, <laughs> growing a batch of green beans in here at the same time, which worked really well for the part of it, but where the winter squash trailed out and covered up the green beans, that didn't work so well. So, um, they're right down here. Let's go look. Well, the tomatoes are still alive in here. It's, you know, the high tunnel really protects it. And it can get probably down to 25 degrees before it gets too cold in here to actually frost and kill the tomatoes. This is not cold and it's it hasn't been hard frosted. Maybe it's a little bit frosted on the edge. It's a little discolored, but there's still a lot of green tomatoes in here. Old guy yesterday picked another five gallon bucket of them. Over here on the side, you can see where our butternut squash were planted and they're growing. There's a lot of them in here. I don't know. Uh, we might have we planted direct seeds in here and let them come up in here instead of what we often do where we uh, plant seeds in trays and then transplant them. We did get a good amount of powdery mildew in here, but the squash had already made, and so we didn't do anything about controlling it. Um, I think that could be something that is a problem with doing them in in a greenhouse high tunnel thing because it's too damp in here and powdery mildew loves dampness. I'm waiting for him to come. I've jumped over here to uh, number four. We still have green beans growing in here. They're ready to harvest. Uh, it's it's a place where they didn't come up very well, right down the middle where we've had trouble all summer long. But uh, there are there's a pretty good amount of green beans here, so I need to get them dealt with. I don't really want to can anymore because we've I've canned so many green beans that like I've gone crazy canning green beans. Look at that loaded down plant. So what I think I'll do is pull up all these plants. Icicles falling down. Uh, pull up all these plants and uh, pick the beans off. And then I'm just going to store them in my refrigerator and you know share them with uh, Jeremiah's family and we'll just eat on them over the next week and try to get them used up without having to preserve them in any way. If you watched our videos up in the spring when we were uh, planting everything in here, we planted nine cucumber plants on this uh, cattle panel in the north end of number four. Those nine cucumber plants grew there all summer long. And even though they got really ugly, new fresh growth would come out and grow more cucumbers. And we had actually more cucumbers than two families could eat without enough to preserve anything because I personally didn't want to. I, old guy direct sowed some broccoli seeds in here directly into the ground, which eh, I didn't have much faith in, but surprisingly, uh, a lot of them came up. What he was doing was planting three seeds every 18 inches or so. Maybe it looks more like he was going every two feet sometimes. And on almost every hill, something came up. Some of them look a whole lot better than others, but I think we're going to get some broccoli out of this if we can keep it from freezing too hard. 
Well, messing around in here, I also found a really a, a nice daikon radish and a really nice pak choy. I think I'll cut that and we're going to have daikon radish and pak choy chicken soup for lunch. That's a nice surprise. And right there is a cucumber laying on the ground that I'm sure is a good one to eat. And snow and ice is actively falling off. That means it's warm enough in here to melt it from the bottom side and let it slide down. Well, I got the wagon down here, but I need some clippers because we don't want to break the tops off because it gives them a place to spoil. So, Jen's going to have to go look for some clippers. We're going to harvest all of our butternut sports today, and we feel it's necessary because it's getting below freezing at night now. and. They can take a little while in the greenhouse, but eventually we lose them, so we're going to harvest them all. And normally, we check to see if they're ripe or not. But in the way we do that, we check the little ends on the to see if they're brown. And if they are, well, we figure they're probably ready. But also, we see if our fingernail will go through the skin easily. And if it does, why well, it's not normally ready, but this one is. The stems are really hard, so it takes quite a bit of cutting. I think I'm about to cut some of these small ones off first, I guess. So we can get out a little farther. Boy, that is hard. <laughs> but it's okay. a nice squash. Now, whenever you're handling your squash, I've read and I believe that you should handle them like they're eggs. They seem hard and tough, but if you want to keep them over the winter and have them last the longest that they can, you need to handle them carefully. So we have two butternut squash here. The one that you can see on the right is pretty typical with the, the seed cavity being down here with a long, straight, meaty looking neck. Well, sometimes you'll get some like this that have a really tiny seed cavity and then the, the neck is uh, similar to the one with the larger seed cavity. Um, this is kind of a a messed up one but it about has the same amount of flesh on it that this one has so let's compare these two this one is the one I was showing you with the, the seed cavity and the long meaty neck well this one has an even bigger seed cavity but it has this little short neck on it so even though this part looks bigger you don't you're not going to get as much flesh out of that and you have this little short neck so if you're choosing to buy what to buy I would pass this one up I used to live in the country on a high lonesome hill crow by day and by night the whipper will I used to live in the country on a high lonesome hill crow by day and by night the whipper will I'm satisfied, tickled to just to be with you. particular brand of course because we like them a lot better than any other kind we get and they just have a solid body in them and they cook up nice 
and tastes good. And they store very well. If you handle them carefully, they will last all the way in, well up into the spring. We've got a pretty good sized load of squash and it's very heavy. So now we've got to try to get it out of here and get to the house where we're going to store it. And so, I hope Dan's feeling strong. Looks like I better help. Well, we got through the snowy grass. You get down to the driveway. Hopefully it'll be easier to pull down there. Well, we got our horse all brought up here to the produce house now. And we're going to put them in each right crate just one deep and then stack them on top of each other till we run out I don't think that's a good place to put them <laughs> well we got our butternut squash brought in here and stacked up um, I think we have like seven crates of it or so that's a lot of butternut squash for us to eat over uh, the, the winter and into the spring but we're going to concentrate on trying to do it and at this point I want to show you the what I feel like is the six survival foods that we've grown this summer to to carry us over the winter and to uh, help us be able to eat well um, now the things that I feel like are important if you're in a survival situation is carbohydrates because you need the the calories from the carbohydrates you need the energy from the carbohydrates and then you need your vitamin C and you know the different vitamins that you can get from vegetables protein is usually a little short when it comes to vegetables uh, we have you know meat to eat so I'm not concerned about the protein with the uh, vegetables but uh, I kind of want an interesting diet as much as we can and uh, something that would carry us through and keep us healthy if we had to live in a survival situation and who knows what might happen with the, the way things are these days so what we've stacked up here for the winter is potatoes we got a pretty good harvest of potatoes we planted a lot and we weren't totally happy with our harvest but i think we got plenty for the the cost of the seeds um, so we've got two stacks and then here's small ones that we've been working on the next thing for us is a, a money crop for us actually but uh, we certainly save lots of them and that involves onions so we've picked out uh, good solid onions to use over the winter time and we store them in this building where we're keeping it warm but hopefully not too warm and then this is the squash. I've got all the little runts on top, but you can see there are two, four, six, seven crates of them. And then what we have here is our sweet potato crop. Uh, we've got four nice crates there, which is plenty. There's old guy and me, but then we've got Jeremiah's family up here and our son who lives in town. We share whenever we can with them. So uh, then... Two other things, that's four things, but the two other things that we have grown and put up a lot of this summer is tomatoes. Like I canned at least 200 quarts of tomatoes. That's a lot of tomatoes. And then green beans. I've canned a lot of green beans. So the, our six things that we're going to have a lot of and available to eat on a regular basis is potatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, butternut squash, green beans, and tomatoes. I think we're going to survive. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Chicken, pork, and beef. All right, we got meat on top of that, so we're doing good.